Yes, I'd like to introduce Justin McDonald, the head football coach at uh, AJ High School in Arizona. Uh, Justin has some very precise thoughts about how the Whaley Timer can help your pass game. Uh, we use the, the Whaley Timer uh, quite a few different ways. We find ways to integrate this, this uh, timer. Um, and I'm going to talk about a few of the, the primary ways that we do it. Um, really what we try to do is create a sense of you know, internal clock with our players um, with how, how long certain things take and creating that, that internal clock with, uh, you know, in their minds um, so that we're really creating a sense of urgency so that they're moving fast but they're not rushing. Um, and so I want to talk about a few of those things we use them for. Uh, primarily we use them for quarterbacks. I use them for quarterbacks in the offseason. Um, and there's a handful of things we, we do with the quarterbacks. Um, one of the most common ways we'll use them is with the three-step drop. And so uh, the number, you know, magic number for us in the three-step game, and we're a shotgun team, so it's, you know, uh, it's a shotgun snap, and which essentially is a one-step plant and throw for us. Uh, that's 1.3 seconds is the magic number for us. Um, you know, we can live with 1.5 seconds, uh, but anything over that, we start running into real problems as we throw the ball down the field with windows closing, etc. So we want to get our guys at 1.3 seconds, um, which obviously uh, we have to factor in the snap, which I'll talk about briefly in a moment, um, make sure the snap is uh, at the time it needs to be at, which leaves us, leaves us with the, you know, the remainder of time uh, to make sure that we're gripping the ball, setting our hallway foot, and um, you know, making our read and delivering the football and getting it where it needs to be in time. Um, and so really trying to get our quarterbacks and, and our receivers as well, but getting them to understand how windows work and how time works and trying to also factor in the importance of letting the ball go a tenth of a second late and how that has exponential um, consequences as we throw the ball down the field. As receivers get farther down the field, the throws have to become farther, therefore the ball has to be in the air longer, giving the defense more time to react and, and move the same distance in more time. So the, the uh, advantage goes to the defense the longer we take. Um, so we use that in the, the three-step or the quick game, whether we're under center with the other quarterbacks I've trained or whether we're in our own offense in the shotgun, um, that 1.3. And I've got uh, under center, you have a little more control. You can actually get it down as low as about 1.1 seconds if you really get your feet in the ground and get the ball out of your hand. Um, we also use it for uh, our five-step drills, timing our five-step uh, footwork. We've got really two pieces of uh, uh, footwork when it comes to the five-step drop. We've got what we call our rhythm, which is you know five-step plant and throw. There's no hitch in that. And then we've got our hitch step uh, that we, we correlate with our intermediate breaking routes. And we, we throw our um, what we call our rhythm footwork with more vertical types of routes, posts, um, seams, uh, long fades, and uh, corner routes, for example. Uh, we, we break it down. Essentially, we want 2.1 seconds with the rhythm. Uh, and that the, we, we want that hitch to take no more than about two, two tenths of a second. So we're really aggressively hitching up, getting the feet set up underneath us and letting the football go. And so uh, that hitch step is something that is uh, very consciously co coordinated into the concepts that we're, we're throwing down the field. Um, and so those are the numbers we're, we're working with there. That buzzer, when we set this, this clock, what we'll do is we'll just put the seconds, you know, if it's 1.3 seconds, we'll click it one, you know, add three tenths of a second on there. It's voice activated. Uh, we can also, you can also manually click it, of course. Um, and so when we're working uh, shotgun snaps, whatever it is, we'll just, you know, we'll put it near the quarterback so we can hear his voice. He barks out a nice sharp command and it starts the, starts the timer. So, and then of course it resets so we get through all of our reps um, without ever having to, to toy with the clock or whatever. And they're getting immediate feedback, audio feedback. Um, on whether or not they're getting getting the ball off in the right amount of time, and the same is true on how fast they're getting the footwork out uh, in the five-step drop and, and letting go of the football. Um, we also time and work on the actual release. So what I call the trigger from the moment that we mentally trigger, begin to separate the ball, bring the arm mechanic around, and then let go of the football. Um, we work on that timing. And uh, one of the drills we do is a crossover drill where we'll actually start the drill in the crossover uh, footwork as if we're simulating the second to last step of a crossover um, of a drop step, whether it's the second step of a three step drop, the fourth step of a, a five step drop, um, where our weight is transitioned for a right handed quarterback, the weight's transitioned on the left foot. Um, and so from mentally triggering, planting that foot, bringing the arm around, letting go of the football, we've got that at about 0.8 seconds. Um, and so we can also, of course, put the timer on that uh, to make sure um, our guys are. are Planting, there's a real sense of urgency and a violence in the motion that have, of how they set that foot, plant that foot, trigger that hip through, um, and get the ball out of their hands. Uh, and so, the, so with that full motion, and we're looking at 0.8 seconds, the actual trigger from separation to you know bringing it around should be you know around around half a second, um, 0.5 seconds from release, separation of the ball to the ball coming out of the you know the extended arm is 0.5 seconds. So you put the whole mental trigger, planting the foot and throwing at 0.8 seconds. Um, you know, subtract that from 
from the 1.3, which is, which is what we want in the three-step drop, for example. That leaves the snap, which is obviously something that's really important. Um, something that's really important uh, in the shotgun, in the, the offensive scheme, and the time that we're doing. We want that snap at 0.5 seconds, um, no more than 0.5 seconds at all. So we're, if we're getting consistent uh, half a second snap, that leaves us 0.8 seconds, and we're right there at our 1.3 seconds. So you know, any variation of that um, obviously affects, affects the play. If we're fumbling with snaps, if we're, not, you know, if we're taking time to get the laces uh, you know, in the quick game, we don't have time to do those things. We learn to throw without the laces. Uh, we're going to make sure our snaps are good. They're, you know, they're in the chest. They're in the frame of the quarterback. So those are all things we can time as well. So that gives our, our centers um, that immediate auditory feedback as well. One of the drills I do with, uh, with quarterbacks is put them through a progression drill as well. So we'll run a progression, um, an entire concept that may have you know, four actual, um, actual routes into, into the concept. Uh, and what we're looking for are four specific you know, routes in the progression that they're looking for. And those routes will be based on, on the progression. We'll, we'll want to hit that vertical um, attacking route. We call it our rhythm route that we're going to throw on that five-step plant and throw. Um, and, and then we'll go to our read concept where we're running a, a combination that's attacking some sort of lateral defender. Um, and then if that's not there, we reset the feet and we check down to what we call our rush route. Um, you know, mostly all those concepts and that verbiage taken from uh, the Quarterback Academy and Darren Slack, uh, uh, Quarterback Academy, you know, I guess progression and concept system that they've developed. Uh, and so we've implemented that. So our, our quarterbacks always have that internal clock and they always have a clear set of um, rules and expectations that they're going to go through as they check through that progression and, and get that football out of their hand at the appropriate time. So we'll put them through that, have them make those reads, have them make that rhythm throw in 2.1 seconds, um, you know, reset that clock, give them a different read, uh, and set the clock at 2.3 seconds, give them the read that makes them then hitch to throw the read combination, um, and have that clock set at 2.3 so they'll know did, you, you know, did you make your decision, get your footwork in the ground, et cetera, and make that throw in time. And then we're, we're trying to check that ball down to our release route, um, excuse me, our rush route, we're trying to check that down in, in um, about 2.8 seconds, and we want to have our guy cross the line of scrimmage in 3.1 seconds. If, if he goes through his progression from the rhythm route to the read com, uh, combination to checking off to the rush route, if those things aren't there as he pumps and pulls that, that rush route, if that guy's covered, he's taken off and across the line of scrimmage in 3.1 seconds. And so we try to give them that real uh, specific feedback so that internal clock's built so they're moving fast and they're never rushing because they know how much time and what that uh, intuitively feels like. Uh, we used uh, this... Uh, machine here. We use this for the defensive line, offensive line too. We really use it for the defensive line. Again, creating a system uh, that uh, um, concept of you know, internal clock, creating that time. Works for offensive linemen as well. Um, but with our defensive line, we use that for pass rush drills. Uh, whether it's one-on-ones, whether it's full pass rush drills, um, you know, we'll set that clock so that uh, you know, the defensive line, if you let them go all day, they have obviously have the advantage. And you know, them succeeding at four seconds is not really them succeeding. Um, as well as um, letting your offensive linemen who, you know, when they're running back and they're hitting your pop-up dummy or whatever it is, and those offensive linemen, um, you know, if they've held a guy for four seconds, well, they've held him a lot longer than we, we need them to hold him in our offense. And so uh, you set that clock, depending on what you're trying to protect and what your pass protection is, um, you're giving a more realistic um, feedback on whether or not those defensive linemen are being successful or not when they get back there and hit your pop-up. So that's, uh, of course, numbers that we toy with based on what type of pass protection um, we're working on at that time, um, but we can set that clock at, at three seconds, and three seconds is a long time in, in you know quarterback time. And so, if you set that clock at three seconds or so, um, you're really giving a, a you know sense of urgency for those defensive linemen to compress, get in throwing lanes, you know, compress the pocket, um, try to beat their man, and, and get a piece of that pop up dummy. So you know, we, we really try to um, you know, give them about three seconds, so we can lengthen that a little bit if we want. We can also shorten that if we're trying to do a earlier pass protection, uh, shorter pass drops. Um, we also use that for our defensive linemen when they're running the hoops. Um, you know, most people run have some sort of drill where they're, they're doing hoop drills with their uh, defensive linemen, and so we'll set that time. And a lot of times we can do this as competition. So you'll set somebody, you'll have somebody set the bar. You'll time them manually, maybe with a, a hand clock, etc. And then you've got the time to beat. And so uh, you know, if somebody beats that, you just you go back onto the timer and you lower that time um, and see, okay, who's the next guy that can beat it? First guy that can hit this pop up after running the hoop twice, whatever it is, um, before that buzzer goes off, you know, he's the new record holder, and so now that's the new mark to beat. So we can do that. We can do those competitions, team competitions before practice, after practice, those sorts of things. You can have the, you know, you can get your receivers, your DBs, your linebackers. They can of course do that and compete against other guys, you know, in a drill that. Uh, those defensive linemen are running every single day. So you can kind of get another way to compete, um, create some uh, you know, competition, uh, some, some fun team camaraderie, etc. We also sometimes will will tie incentives 
whether it's extra conditioning, less conditioning, those sorts of things, to those competitions. And that's worked out well for us. And that's what I wanted to talk about here, actually, was team competitions. And so anything that you can create a consistent time with, um, with consistent spacing, distances, etc., you can, you can use this for. And so we'll set up all sorts of different um, practical, relevant drills uh, that we can do as team competitions, whether they're relays, etc. So we can have step overs where linebackers have to step over a bag, dip and rip a pop-up dummy, you know, come across and, and dip and rip off of this, or, or uh, you know, whatever type of uh, drills we want to set up. Maybe, like I said, maybe five step overs, two pop-ups, and at the end of it, you have a one-man sled that they have to drive five yards, something like that. And so you got that time. Somebody will set the bar on how fast, you know, how fast you should be able to do that, and then you can set that clock, and give a, you know, give an auditory go, which is also a nice thing when you're doing competitions. There's no human error of, you know, somebody saying go and starting a little bit earlier or a little bit later for one guy versus the next. Um, also, there's the, you know, the audio cue um, to start the play for everybody. So our guys are reacting to sound as well. Um, and that clock will start, and you know they know did you did you beat the time or not? Uh, and so there's no arguing on you know coach you were you were slow or you were early or you were late on the, the, the time or any of those sorts of things. So it's been really um, really a lot of different ways, a lot of different innovative ways to use a really simple machine. You click your seconds, you click your you know your tenths of seconds, and bang, you're good. You want to add a second, you add you know a tenth of a second. You just click the button up, click it down if you want to take some time off, and you just find find those times, create a consistent uh, consistent drills, consistent spacing, and then you just got to adjust and find the time that you want to get the uh, results that you want from uh, your players. Um, there's lots of other ways that we've used those. These are some of the, the most uh, useful and sort of daily and weekly ways that we'll use the Whaley Timer. Um, you can use them for wide receiver drills, you can use them for offensive line drills, pulling drills, tap, trap drills, etc. We use them for giving a guy time to get off of a bump and run that we've got to get rid of the football. There's really just lots of ways to use it. So it's been an awesome tool for us and technique for us in creating, again, that internal clock so that our players move fast but don't rush. Um, so that's it. If you have any questions ever, feel free to contact me, and I'll be happy to share any of the ideas that we've come up with uh, um, you know, in our time here. And if you've got any good ideas that you'd like to share, you know, please do. Thanks for your time. Uh, Coach, uh, do you have uh, – can you tell us a little bit about what kind of uh, difference that timer makes in the amount of effort put out, especially in your obstacle course drills and with the team? Excellent. Um, yeah, as soon as you put a clock on something, as soon as that clock is automated and it has nothing to do with you know human error, stopping, starting. You know, if you want to, if you're doing an obstacle course and you've got a, a coach with a clock, well, no one knows did the guy beat the time or not. Um, which, if you're time and you want to keep things secretive, that's one thing. When you're competing, you want to; those players want to know now. And they all, there's also the accountability that you know, coach can't flub the numbers. You know, if you're going to get this drill done in 2.7 seconds and that's the bar to beat, you either you either you know make the sack in 2.7 seconds or you don't. And so it's something they get excited about because you know, it's almost as if they're competing. They're competing against the time. They're competing against each other. It depends how you set up the drill. So um, you know, they are, they've got that sense of urgency that we're trying to create. Um, with quarterbacks specifically talking about that 1.3 seconds three-step drop drill. You know, first time I'll, I'll work with a quarterback once we've worked on the mechanics, the proper weight distribution of the three-step drop. Um, and once he have the, has the tools necessary, a lot of times a quarterback I just begin working with, he'll be dropping a three-step drop at, you know, 1.8 seconds, 1.7 seconds, which, you know, we're half a second late. That's uh, eternity. And um, as soon as you put that clock on it, show him how long he's taken, find out, okay, how long are you taking? Um, you know, he's beaten 1.9 seconds, he's at 1.8, uh, then you just lower that down a tenth at a time. And so once everything's good, now you're just creating a sense of urgency and having them move faster. And, you know, in a, in a 10 or 15 minute period with a quarterback for the very first time, I can take him from 1.8 or 1.7 or 1.9, whatever he's at. And if, if the, uh, the techniques and the mechanics are taught, all we're doing now, all we need now is to turn up the sense of urgency. Um, we just continue to lower that one tenth at a time until he succeeds. And then it's okay, now, now you're 1.5, let's see if you can get 1.4. And so he's, he's racing. And what they learn is what I mentioned already be fast but don't rush. They learn they can't rush through stuff and then still throw the ball successfully or get their feet in the ground in the right place at the right time to distribute weight correctly. So they learn to be fast without rushing. And they learn that, you know, while 1.3 seconds seems way faster, half second is so much, so much faster. Um, when you're doing things half a second late. Uh, but when you come down one-tenth of a second at a time, they're getting down there consistently. And now you've programmed in them forever. They know and they've felt and they've, they've accomplished, they've executed, what, 1.3 seconds in this case, what it feels like. And now that muscle memory sinks in, that sense of urgency that they need is established. And now you just hold them accountable to it. You, you know, you, you, you 
break the timer out. You don't even have to do it every day. You break it out once a week. You break it out. If our guys look like their, their footwork is slow on film, then we get back and we bring out the timers again. We're going to work with them every week on every drill we do. We're going to put those timers on them. And that sense of urgency is recreated and you know, reestablished. Thank you very much, Coach.